Hello everybody, this is Sue from the Claymates Art Cafe. I was going to do a little lesson for you tonight. I got some Buddhas in and um, a lot of times when I have the Buddhas, I do a patina effect on them. So I was going to show you how I do that. And so what, what I'm going to do is I start with a little bit of black paint, black acrylic paint. You want to use a, a wide brush, something that's going to cover well, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you spread it out easy, evenly. You don't want to have it all bumpy and drippy. You want to make sure that you smooth out the color. Generally, if you keep going back and forth, back and forth, when that glossy finish starts to disappear, you'll know that it's drying on there nice and flat. Sometimes if it's a little bit um, thin, you can go back over it with your paintbrush. But you're going to go over the whole piece and get everything done with the black. You're gonna be amazed at how easy this um, technique is. I've applied it on a lot of things. I've even done it on furniture. I've bought like uh, metal signs and uh, like sun with the moon on them and things. And I've spray painted them with black paint and done the patina antiquing on it and sprayed it with a lot of the clear sealer and it lasts a really long time i've also had people do this piece with um you know the natural colors the skin colors um, which you can do and it makes a really nice effect either antiquing it with an oil-based paint or um, using chalks on it for for depth and for antiquing so I'm just gonna go over this whole piece with the black paint this piece is sold at my website if you want to paint it at home I also have all the paints and brushes here so if you don't have any water-based acrylic paints at your house you can order what you would like you could either order to do it this way or you can do your own creation at your home and then what we do is we just get like a um, can of clear spray like Krylon or one of the uh, other I think Rust-Oleum makes some any kind of clear sealer and it should be pretty safe to put outside some of the newer ones have the um whatever they have to block the ultraviolet rays in them and i think that that will stop the sun from bleaching out the color so i'm trying to do this as quickly as i can I suppose if we were all doing it together, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> Maybe we should do a Zoom. But this is my first video. So if um, people like watching and doing online, we can do some live sessions on my page. Um, I have gnomes. I have the paint your own Christmas trees that... I was surprised. I wasn't going to list those. I was going to do like Christmas in July and um, have some Christmas items. But a lot of people have been messaging me seeing that they're, they're home and they have some extra time. It's something that they can do at night after they put the kids to bed. The Christmas trees are really, really easy. You'd be surprised. And um, you could even have the kids help you out with that because it's just glazing. So we're getting there. 
Gonna get in between his toes. A long time ago, my mom picked a boot up. I don't know where she got it. I was a young kid and I was kind of not mesmerized, but it attracted to it in a way because it had rice. It had rice glued to the top of the pot and I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> I think she still has that at her house in the sunroom. So how are you guys all doing being quarantined? I thought it was kind of fun in the beginning. I I felt like it was a good time to refresh, recharge, get things done. It was kind of nice not having any place to go, no appointments. Um, just chill and do your own thing, but now it's getting kind of old. Um, I miss my parents and my family, and I feel like I, I moved away, and I don't know anybody around here because just staying in the house. But, but we're all in it together, so we're going to stay safe and create, right? It'll be gone before we know. Hopefully it goes away for the summertime. We'll see what happens. And then we can open the new studio. I'm really psyched about that. But at the same time, it gave me a chance to move in slow, not be in a big rush, get things done the way I want them. The paints are all moved in. Um, all the bisque is pretty much here. Um, I have a lot of Christmas down the cellar that I moved in last year thinking I would be there, be here for Christmas, so. I didn't make that deadline. See, he's getting, he's getting all black. I just got his head left. It dries really, really fast, as you can see. I don't know if any of you have the, I call them the chalks. We always called them chalks back in the day, but the kids correct me and tell me they're pastels, but they're a little box and they have little square chalks in them, pastels. And those work great for shading projects. Um, what you do is you take a, if any of the, if anybody did the truck with the Christmas tree in it at Christmas time, I um, used the pastels for those. And you just take a stiff brush and scrub it in the chalk and scrub it in the lines of things for shading, shadowing, and it makes a really, really nice effect. My daughter, Ashley, she uses chalks a lot for her projects, and I'm amazed. I'm amazed at what she does with chalks. She pretty much does her whole project with the chalks, and it comes out really, really great. So we got to scrub this in his face. out there sometimes if you're noticing a lot of little um, specks and dots where you are having trouble getting the paint in there you can take a little a little tiny dab of water in your paintbrush and slightly water the paint down a little bit make a little bit of a wash 
and it will seep right into those lines very quickly. This piece isn't so bad because it's fairly flat, but if you have something with a lot of nooks and crannies, um, it makes life a lot easier. Like see inside this little pot, it's hard to get in there. So if you take a little bit of water and make a little bit of wash, it's hard because I'm doing this on my phone so it doesn't move. I have to get one of the ones that move with me. And this this just oozes right down into the, the crevices and the lines. Okay. So I think he's pretty well covered. Oh, see right in there in his fingers. Got to get all that. You don't want to leave anything white, but like I said, you want to make sure you uh, get everything. Okay. So now while this dries, I'm going to prepare um, our next step. I'm going to try to turn this down without knocking it over. So you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wash. I'm going to take some dark aqua, dark teal, and put a little bit in a cup. Just a tiny, tiny. And then I'm going to add some water to it. Okay. Because I'm, what I'm trying to do is make a wash. So it's going to be thin. Let's see if I have a brush that I like. I'm going to mix it up. It's going to be really, really soupy. Okay. Put this under him. Turn this back a little bit. Nope, down more. Nope, it's going to tip over if I do it like that. I'll hold him up. So now you're going to take this, um, this wash that you made with the water. And you're just going to dredge it all over the whole piece and just let it run in the crevices. Just let it go wherever. So you can you can kind of see the effect already just and then just kind of catch some of the ones that start taking off on you rub it in but the key is you really want to make sure you get them in all the crevices you don't want to have any spots that are just black without the green and you'll see why later see it's starting to dry so it doesn't look as crazy green as it did before. Yeah, I should have put some music on behind me. Didn't think of it. 
I was just thinking, get my brushes, my paints, my water. <laughs> When I took ceramic classes back in the, do I say the date, I'll show you my age, back in the 70s, my ceramic teacher would not let us leave her shop unless we painted the bottoms. So all the time when I have kids or anybody at the shop, the kids will say to their moms, hey, do we have to paint the bottoms? The moms will always say, no, you don't have to paint the bottoms. No one's going to see it. Well, my ceramic teacher used to tell me that if you ever notice, if you show somebody something that you've made, the first thing they do is they pick it up and they look at the bottom. We don't know why, and it's true, I've noticed it a lot. People pick it up and look at the bottom. She would not let us leave her studio unless the bottoms were painted. So I always tell the kids, no bare bottoms. And... I try not to be a stickler with it. I mean, if the parents don't want them to paint their bottoms, I just let it go. But, but if they ask me, I'll tell them, yes, you have to paint your bottoms. So I'm doing his little face. So he's all green. See? I'm going to put on my glasses, see if I missed anything. Up little spots. Okay. We're going to let this dry a couple minutes. It seems like it's drying really fast, which is good because I don't think you want to sit here looking at me for while this dries. Okay. So that's going to dry. And while that is drying, I am going to show you what we're going to do next. So now we're going to take the copper. This is Duncan Copper metallic paint. And we're going to squirt some of that on the plate. Okay. And I always have a huge supply of coffee filters at the shop. And we use this for dry brushing a lot. And this is a great technique to learn because you can apply it to a lot, a lot of projects. What you do is you use a stiff brush, something that's not going to bend very easily. This is almost like a stencil brush, except stencil brushes are generally round. I do believe they do have... So anyway, we're going to use this brush and we're going to stick it into the, the copper paint. Then you're going to take your coffee filter. It's hard to do with the bow because, and trying to get to there. You're going to rub it on the coffee filter. I'm going to do it this way so you can see it up. Words. So I don't want to see anybody just, I tell people this all the time, don't just rub, rub, rub. You need to take your time and really scrub all the color out of the brush. Don't try to be in a hurry and rush it along because what's going to happen is it's going to be all blotchy. You're going to have more paint in one spot than in others. And you're going to end up painting it black over again because you're not going to be happy with the results. Okay? So, it looks like there's no paint in there, but there is paint in there. So now what you're going to do is, this is probably still a little too soon, but for the sake of not making you wait, dry brushing, what you want to do is you want to hit all the bumps, the high spots, leaving the indented spots the other color the green the black whatever you have as your base coat i always tell people to go against the grain so if your bumps are going this way you want to go this way and you're going to do this on the whole 
whole project. Usually it takes a couple coats and I don't recommend doing it so fast. You want to let it dry thoroughly because what will happen is your green and your colors underneath didn't have a chance to dry and it's going to start pulling off and getting bumpy. And another way to tell is if it's cold, then you know it's still wet. And this is definitely still cold. Generally, I like to use a bigger brush than this, but I don't seem to have any here at my house. All my brushes are still at the other shop, which is getting empty, by the way, little by little. Move this up a little bit. So see how all of these bumps are here? That's where you want to just keep rubbing the copper acrylic over it and you're going to see that it's going to start to grab the color and when nothing's happening anymore you can reload your color back on your coffee filter i'll show you some on the face But again, you don't want to scrub it in those lines. You want see there's too much paint on the brush right now. You want to build it up slowly. And leave leave it in the crevices. And again, you can make it very, very copper, or you could just give it a little bit of a tinge of copper. It's a matter of preference. You could dry brush it with gold, you could dry brush it with silver, you could um Base coat it with any color you want. If you don't want to do the, the uh, patina effect, you could just paint it black and dry brush different colors on it. This one here with the, the teal is just the, the patina effect. But I think we're going to do some gnomes and different things in the next couple of weeks. So I can show you how to dry brush the beard and the face using the chalks and a lot of the different other techniques that we we use in ceramics. Can you see it? Um, I know a lot of people are home with the kids. They don't have time to go to ceramic classes. And um, we could do some online classes at night. Put the kiddos to bed and we can paint. Let's see, I can't get this camera to look down without tipping over it's on one of those those weather tech stands so if i tilt the phone too close forwards it tips over i suppose i could get my computer and use the little camera but that's be a lot of work Like I said, you can leave a lot of green on it. You can choose to do it really solid, but you do want to let some of that green shine through if you're doing the patina anyways. Always remember to go against the grain because you want the bumps to catch the color and the indented parts to stay with the green. You know, there's there's um, beads here and things, and if you wanted to dry brush a different color on there, like silver or um, even this little bowl, you could dry brush a different color. You could add some colors to it or just do the whole thing with the copper. I'm trying to rush it so you can see where I'm going. I'm figuring any minute Dale's going to let all the dogs out and they're all going to come running out here. They start complaining if they're in the house and I'm out here. I 
I wish I could fast forward the, the movie while I'm taping it. Okay, so we need some more copper. The sun's out today, so that's helpful. You could dry brush the whole thing with gold or uh, antique gold. I think I'm going to go to the shop and get all my brushes. I just went in the house and grabbed what I could find. But n normally I would use a, a nice puffy round dry brush like a number eight or number ten this is just a little six square I I think the bigger the brush the better you get a, a nice a softer color something that's too st too small too stiff it makes it look scratchy and more liney is liney a word You see, okay, let's see where we got. See over here. I made an online store. A lot of people um, wanted activities to do with the kids or art classes to do with the kids. So I made an online store at my website and you can purchase the bisque, which is these ceramic pieces. And um, you can choose your own colors. People ask if the kits are already prepared. I don't like to prepare the kit myself because I want the children to pick the colors they want to use. I don't want to pick the colors for them because some children might want a gray elephant and other children might want to have a pink elephant. So you can go online, um, pick out whatever colors you want. If you need brushes, those are on there too. And um, the next week or two, I'll have the sprays on there because what you want to do is spray this with a clear sealer and um, it helps protect the paint. If it gets dusty, you can wipe it down with, with a wet rag or... Um, the, the glazes, I don't have the glazes on the website yet. It, it's gonna take a lot of preparation because glazes have like 100 colors. Um, and you have to put three coats of every color if anybody wants to do glazes and you pick something on the website, just let me know and I'll I'll pack glazes in your order instead of the acrylics. But the glazes would have to be brought back to be fired. See what's happening? He needs more in his belly. If I rub his belly, I can make a wish. I'm gonna do some Christmas tree, paint your own Christmas tree events. What I really wanna do is um, the truck with the Christmas tree on the back. That was very, very popular last year, but a lot of people work and they couldn't get out. And I know it's early for that, but a lot of people have been asking. So I figured I would do this first. It's a little bit on the, and get my camera set up because like I said, this, this isn't sufficient. And, um, like I said, I'm doing this really fast for you. And we'll do the Christmas tree ones. The, the Christmas tree, um, with the truck, I'll let everybody pick whatever color they want for their truck. And I'll teach you how to dry brush the tree. You can order your truck with clear lights or with colored lights. 
and uh, that just gets sprayed with a clear spray afterwards and, and it lights up too. And that's something you can keep out all, all winter. See how he's coming out? He look cute. Just have a little more to do back here. It's a little scratchy, but I, I got to get a different brush, so, but you can get the gist of it. See? Let's see, I thought I had some gold. All right, so there's some gold here, so I'm going to show you what I meant about adding other colors I mean you the possibilities are endless you can do whatever you want but when you're dry brushing you don't want to you don't want to wash your brush in between colors because your brush will get all soggy and you won't be able to dry brush with it so you always want to scrub the old color out with the new color if possible um, so I just took the gold and rubbed it into my brush and I'm rubbing it back out into the coffee filter. Um, obviously, if you're using red paint and you're, or green paint and you're going to red, like that's not going to rub out. But if you're um, going from brown to a lighter brown or a, a red and you want to get into pink, you could add a little bit of white to your brush. So I'm just rubbing the gold into the brush. So this is what I mean about highlighting other things with a different color like if we wanted to do these little these little beads here with the gold it's not going to make a huge difference but it'll it'll give it a little bit of um and you can do that a little more heavier and that's called wet brushing <clears throat> There's still copper in the brush. Each time I rub the brush onto the copy filter, it will get a little bit brighter gold. See? So like say we wanted to do this pot with a little bit of more a little bit more gold. Just to brighten it up a little bit. 